The following presentation contains content that will offend the virtue signaling of both the left and the right, and may be a very fake threat to the fake news of our fake democracy. Viewer discretion is advised. Uh, no. No. Fuck that. Uh, no. No! Worship me! Crowd who was to protest over something someone said. They called for the resignation of a man who seemed quite patient and explaining what it was he really meant. Apparently, the crowd was mad that he didn't want to ban other wing costumes that might have offended some. When I tried to intervene, a lady lunged right out at me. She summoned some muscle and then began to hum. Oh, there ain't no rest for the trigger. Well, an educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. Through genuine expression, discernment, critical thinking, and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, pure time and velvet style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you. To be to the fullest. Okay. All right, we're good. Anyway, so I was going to talk about the federal banking cartel for a sec. Um, Jeremy, do you think it's a good idea to get rid of the fiat currency and the Federal Reserve out of our country for good? Or do you think we need to do something else? Because I know that um, we talk about the economy so many times, and I think that our economy is not doing well due to the fact that we have so many problems in in our society, in our country, of course. So do you think it's a good idea to get rid of the free out currency and the Federal Reserve banking cartels out of this um, world for good? Or do you think it's a bad idea? Or you think it's not going to work? To get rid of the Federal Reserve? Uh Uh-huh. And the fiat currency. I mean, yes. Uh, Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's... The system is, is going to fail. That's something uh-huh. you have to understand. Ra- rather we get rid of it or not, it's going to fail. It's inevitable. And to, to like I said earlier in the stream, this system that we're on right now has been tried thousands of times throughout history and has not been successful a single time. There's no reason for us to believe that it will be this time. So when people, when you say, hey, You know, the economy is going to crash. Oh, you're just being paranoid. No, literally, it's happened thousands of times throughout history. There's no reason to think otherwise now. It will fail. So it's it's not a matter. It's the, The question is not should we replace it. It's what's a viable replacement for it because that time will come eventually no matter what happens. And so the best thing we can really try to figure out is what's the best thing to replace it with? Because just getting rid of it is going to leave us in a shit situation. We need to know can what I address, to do once it's gone. Can I, can I address that one, the what do we replace it with? I'd like to address that one. Yeah. What we replace it with, and this would be easy enough, is the thing that's actually supposed to be there anyway, real money. Um, we've been tricked into thinking that a, a basically an IOU currency mm-hmm. um, is real money. Because if you look at how fractional reserve banking works, what you're looking at is you have governments that are fully capable of making their own money that are based on actual things that have intrinsic value. 
And instead of them utilizing their own capabilities, they are paying a private corporation not only to make this currency that is pretending to be money, but um, when you pay, <laughs> excuse me, sorry, I guess I just hold. When you um, pay someone to create money, then you're not only creating money as debt at debt, but the money will never exist um, to pay the interest. Pay that's, the interest. That's, what, that's what inflation actually is. Um, you know, people are, and that's what the national debt is. You know, people are always like, who do, who do all these countries owe this money to? Like, like they say like earth is like a, a, a thousand trillion in debt or whatever. Like, who do we owe it to <laughs> Jupiter? You know, it's like, no, it's the, it's basically, it's a Ponzi um, racket to where um, what they're doing is they're, they're tricking us into um, giving away all of the things that actually have real value in exchange for um, worthless paper. And going back to what you were saying on the live, on the previous live stream, um, to where, um, you know, the system is uh, going to fail and that it's built to fail. Um, eventually, they will eliminate currency altogether once they can indoctrinate the masses into accepting a technology-based feudal system in which everyone just accepts that they are the cucks of the new priesthood of experts who have a divine right to rule. So it's like medievalism on crack. See also Bra the, the movie and or book Brave New World if anybody wants a glimpse at what that tomfuckery would look like. Um, you're also talking about environment. You mentioned the word environment. Well, if you hyphenate the word environment, you have environ and you have ment, ment coming from the Latin mente, which means mind or, or mental. Environ means to encircle or to surround. So your environment is, is that, you know, if you want to put it in perspective of you are your mind or your consciousness looking outward, everything around you and your external that surrounds you is your environment to encircle or surround the mind. And so that's why these elites, whatever you want to call them, they use that external environment to mold the mind through that which surrounds it. And what is the controlling factor of that environment that surrounds you? Well, that's government, government, governmental, govern meaning to control mental mind to control the mind so it's all a system of mind control and like cliff had said words very deliberately mean what they mean um it is all very occult and even the word occult tends to be misunderstood people um they they reference it with like oh occult means evil occult does not mean evil it means hidden it means that which is kept secret just like people um think that apocalypse means um armageddon and destruction hold look up, at the meaning up, of, you're, of the you're word apocalypse a, you're, you're going down huge huge rabbit holes i'm almost what done was the, what was the solution to the federal reserve <laughs> the first solution but yeah the the money we our government even though yeah it's a system of mind control you gotta you know you gotta take step you know steps through the Panama Canal out of tyranny. You can't uh, leap from the uh, Atlantic to the Pacific as it, as it were, because that would be a crash and burn. But yeah, step one is um, have government uh, create its own uh, fricking money like it's supposed to based on things like gold and silver and so on and so forth. And as um, our modern digital age has shown us, because the digital age has given us some blessings and cur curses in equal measure, um, you can have uh, cryptocurrencies, um, to, and the, the, this specific type that I'm talking about is referred to as an SMT or social media token that is based on the most valuable thing to exist, and that's, that's human activity. There's nothing more valuable on this planet than the human being, 
and, and people tend to forget that. So whenever, whether it's a crypto, a cryptocurrency or, you know, something like a silver certificate like they had back in Kennedy's day or whatever, whenever something is based on something with real actual value, whether it's human activity or whether it's gold or silver or whatever, that then becomes real money. Whereas the word fiat literally means as I say it is. So that's based on nothing. Oh, I thought it was a little car. <laughs> and precisely, now, I, go ahead. I, I was watching a documentary today on this, and they show some graphs of, of the spike in inflation, if you will, uh, of, of all the different countries that use this fiat currency. And it's, you know, uh, most of us, not all of us, but most of us are in the United States. So we just think about politics in the United States. This is global. Globally, almost simultaneously, you can watch these uh, the inflation rate of, of all the national currencies, you know, globally, just skyrocket once they go, you know, went from this to this fiat currency, went from, you know, the buying power just tanks and the inflation skyrockets. So we're looking at a situation where globally uh, these 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 currencies are going to start to crash one by one. And of course, we will see a, a global currency. So I suppose the question is then, what does a fiat currency look like on a global scale where there's really nothing else to compare it to? It is the one and only currency that is used. Then you could just print out as much as you wanted to, and it would never have to be in comparison to anything. Then, I mean, but that would, of course, come with complete regulation and control of pricing, complete control and regulation of how much and what you can purchase right you would have um sort of a, a you know a, an allotment of things that you can buy it's, i mean this comes down to complete despotism really absolutely it's been predicted for quite some time though or like over uh it's probably been eight to ten years now jeremy when when that max kaiser bought up Deutsche bank back then and they when they fold and they start to have problems, you will see a global meltdown start to occur. Yep. All you need is the right crisis, right, Cliff? Well, that's also why it's important for people to know the difference between real currency and real money, because if enough people know the difference, then as the fiat starts to melt down, then we can go, hey, let's just go back to actually making our own money. And then if we do that, then there's not going to be this meltdown. But if too many people are ignorant to the way the, the real you know, the real world actually works, then no one's gonna no one's gonna be saying, Hey, let's just go back to making our own money because nobody'll know that we weren't actually making our own money. And then there can be that calamity of implosion and chaos and all of that. You know, we sort of saw this Hegelian dialect take place in the creation of the Federal Reserve. That story is actually very important because we see it repeat itself multiple times, where you have a, a private sector of banks that essentially uh, wreck everything, right? And so then the government comes in and says, hey, we'll fix things, but it's not actually the government that did anything at all. It was the bankers again. And so that more than likely will be what will take place the next time. They just continuously keep crashing things and creating a problem to offer the same solution. But as they repeat this cycle, the solution gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You see the, the process here. Here's a question I want to see if uh, anybody here can, can answer it. And even though it, it might sound like I'm about to crack some sort of a joke or riddle it's not take my question uh to the utmost literal um what does the federal reserve bank and the titanic have to do with each other let's see who knows yeah dang it's been a while since i've looked at that but yeah i, I know where you're going with that i remember remember you know studying up on that a little bit but man it's been a long time i don't remember um uh, the castor family being on the titanic Oh, it's a bit more than that. Um, <clears throat> do you guys uh, want me to give the basic uh, synopsis of the story? All in favor, say aye. <laughs> or, uh... <laughs> Go ahead, dude. Go ahead. Let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it. All right. Well, I, I'm not an not an expert in these matters, and I'm I'm definitely going to be giving a more 
simple watered down version of the story, but that's really all we need from Tencent here. Um, we all know about the massive efforts that the uh, the banksters uh, went through to create the Federal Reserve and you know get uh, <coughs> get us back under <coughs> their thumb, as it were. And um, there was one major thing in in, in their way. Um, they wanted to you know create the Federal Reserve Bank. But, um, you know, even without a, a fiat system, the world still worked in the sense of you've got rich, wealthy powers that are, you know, buying off politicians, you know, even even before um, that that happened, that was the case. And so um, these uh, other wealthy powers, because it's not like the elites all think alike and as if they never fight each other, of course they do. Um, there was a section of the elites that were not dealing with uh, the fiat money and the and the bankster stuff they were dealing with real money they they had their own empires that they were looking after and the you know the fiat system they felt threatened by it like hey this could take down my empire no screw you i'm not dealing with you. so the um when the people who wanted to put in the federal reserve went to the politicians like hey this is much cooler. let's do it this way the politicians were like no way you know the people that are that are paying uh paying my bills as it were don't want it and therefore um you know, I don't want it either. No way. So what they decided to do is um, they had the Titanic built. It was supposed to be unsinkable. And all of these heads of industry, all these wealthy uh, people that, um, you know, were backing these politicians, uh, they all had seats on this thing. And of course, all the uh, fiat money elites had uh, seats on the thing too. But right at the last minute, gee, what a coincidence, all the uh, fiat money uh, banking people decided to just suddenly cancel. Oh, well, we're not taking our seats on this trip where we're canceling. Sorry about that. Sorry, it's so last minute. And, you know, you could you could see by the construction of, of the Titanic, like, who builds the bottom of the thing to where, like, the bulkheads, like, just when you start getting to the ceiling, just, just suddenly cut off to this big old open space to where there's this gap so the water can just spill over from one to the other to the other. These bulkheads that were allegedly designed to uh, to prevent that sort of thing were designed to allow that sort of thing, you know, like, and then the number of lifeboats, like it's all fishy. So obviously the heads of these families died. And so now the politicians were like, oh crap, we don't have any backers. And so then the, uh, you know, the, the uh, banksters came in and said, well, we're more than happy to back you. We'll give you our money as long as you let us have this lovely little federal reserve bank here. The politicians said, oh, well, okay, we don't have anybody else to, uh, you know, to, 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 to give us our, our bribery money. So fine, you're the replacements. And, you know, the, re the rest is history. So it's, you know, false flags and dirty pool are a very ancient uh, strategy. As the Bible says, there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> well, that's interesting. But yeah, that's true. I mean, that's what people's, you know, we, we should probably do gold and silver in our society because we don't need this worthless piece of garbage paper that we always get from those bastards and they make money out of us so that way they can go to war and just, you know, do all this stupid crap for no reason, of course. I think what it is is that people should use gold and silver at all costs because in, in that case, it doesn't matter if we have the private banking cartels because they're they're the ones that are causing the problem throughout the world. You know, that's what I say. I think, in my opinion, and I'm not saying it's, a, it's kind of, it's going to sound kind of stupid, but I think we should get rid of it. Like I said before to you, Jeremy, I think the good thing is, well, basically you think it's going to ruin our, our country, of course, if we get rid of the Federal Reserve. So I want to ask you this question. Um, do you think what we what should we do to order to just make our economy better and use gold and silver instead of this paper piece of garbage that we always get and get rid of the federal reserve do you think that it's not going to work or do you think maybe it's going to work if we try to do that kind of stuff well the question is, is is who uh 
who who's in charge of so that process of going from the fiat currency that we have now to gold and silver, right? Do we I mean do we just cut it off and go hey, we're using gold and silver now. Good luck. Or is there a, a staging process? I mean, how how do you how do you transition back to gold and silver? You, you, you get what I'm saying? Like that's very difficult to do. Um, yeah. Who's put it, in like charge I, of facilitating that? Like I I said, it, it would depend on you know the level of uh, of awareness of people about how things really work at the time it happens. Um, if there's a high level of awareness, then pretty easy to make uh systems of transition to where you know you could uh, you know trade in your money money for the the new currency that is literally backed by you know by gold by silver so on and so forth and also you know using smts like i said to where you've got the the digital crypto that's you know backed by human activity i would never recommend crypt, you know mainstream cryptocurrency because that's still controlled by the banksters um, you know the the things that are that where value is is determined by you know the particular social network that the cryptocurrency was built for. You know um, those are the more solid, in my, in my opinion. But you know things like you know people praise uh, Bitcoin and so on, and it's like, well, yeah, it's doing okay for now, but the markets are volatile, and you know the elites control Bitcoin as well. I mean. <laughs> People think that Bitcoin is not con not controlled by the elites as if it's some sort of saving grace. Oh, no, it's controlled. So, again, they it all just depends the on internet. the levels of... They control the internet. How the hell are you going to use uh, Bitcoin if the internet goes down? It's yeah. not only that, Axe, man. I think what it is is that I think what they should do is just get get out of that that stuff with the elitists, of course, if they're trying to, con if the elitists are trying to control Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin should do is like make their own, um, you know, their own money make out of, you know, coins and stuff. I the think idea should... of turning money into bits in a computer is a really stupid idea. Mm. Yeah, basically there's like, there's there's nothing wrong with having a medium of exchange that has a representative value, but it has to be based on something real. Whether you're talking about digital or paper, it has to be based on something real. Human activity. That's the labor go, and resources over, of the people. The, the the currency is backed by the the labor of the people and the natural wealth of the land. Yeah, but not in a fiat problem. <laughs> and that, and, and, well, it, well, it, if it was a government back be it there's no problem it's the interest on the debt for the creation of the money that creates the inflation that's that's the scam of scam of the fiat <laughs> yeah, that's, well, no it's the scam not fiat it's nothing wrong with fiat money inherently it's that it's created as interest bearing debt not spent into the economy as new currency yeah free, Whereas, free of okay. debt which is what as, the governments used to do until the Jew bankers took over. It's like it's like I said earlier, we've been tricked into giving up things of actual value in, in exchange for for paper. You know, that's a part of the validation of. I don't personally understand how a goldback currency would work, considering the estimates are at one hundred and eighty-seven thousand tons to two hundred thousand tons, with some rare estimates being up to a million tons. Wouldn't the price of gold have to skyrocket in order to have a gold-backed currency? There's no inherent, nothing inherently wrong with fiat currency. And if you move to a commodity-based currency, all the power goes to the people who hold the commodities, which is the, which is the bankers. No, so nothing I, I, will change. It's just this is all just a um, a red herring, a distraction. The problem is that private banks are creating the money as interest-bearing debt, not governments creating the money free of debt. That's true. That's absolutely true. There's nothing I also wrong with fiat it. currency. There's gold nothing and, wrong with fiat currency. Gold and silver are not the only... out of your head. Gold and silver would be just as bad as the system we have now because I'm gold and silver is controlled by the same are, people. Yes, are, I agree. I was trying to say that to the you other person. That you can't 
you can't base a, a, an economy in commodities because the limitation of the supply of economy limits the growth of the the supply of the of the commodity limits the growth of the economy you see the economy the money supply has to be expanded as more wealth is created by people Labor, uh, Cliff, labor, labor and natural resources are the basis of wealth. If you tie it to one particular natural resource, then you're limited to that. And what you don't I've been take trying account of the to fact, say... You, can you stop interrupting me, please? And well, you don't you take account of the me. fact... If, I'll just, if you just let me finish, it'd only be another 10 seconds. If you'd stopped interrupting me, I would have been done by now. And so and you've, ended up, the you've ended up taking three times as long if you just waited another 10 seconds. Now I've lost my train of thought. I was simply trying to say earlier when I was interrupted by you multiple times and didn't complain about it at those times and only spoke up after multiple instances. All I was trying to say is that if you're backing a currency with something of intrinsic value, that it doesn't have to exclusively be gold or silver. There's tons of different things that you can you can back a currency with. And, it, you know, in my opinion, at least, I again, I'm not a, a, any sort of expert on this. I'm not claiming to be. But in my opinion, anything that can be used for something other than money is that which has intrinsic value. Um, like you could, like aluminum, for example. Aluminum isn't just used for money. It's useful for a great many things. It's used in aluminum siding. It's used in computer components. It's used in many different industrial things. So <clears throat> anything that has value with practical use that that has an intrinsic value gold and silver are not valuable because they're gold and silver they're valuable because they have uses other than money which is all i was trying to to and to to say earlier when that you know other gentleman kept kept saying there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that da, da, da. And, oh gold and silver oh it's all gonna be the same. Well, you know i was just, I was just trying I, to say I think, I, aren't the only options I think you can you can use anything as currency. It really doesn't matter what it totally. is. So he's not necessarily wrong. That that fiat fiat currency <clears throat> is not necessarily inherently bad. I the agree. Prob, the the problem is is that history has shown us if you give a group of people the authority and power to just make as much of it as they possibly want to, that's exactly what they will do every single time, and they'll Absolutely. collapse the system. It, you have to have a limitation on the you know the, the supply of, of whatever you're going to use if there's not uh, you know a limitation there it, it just it's going to collapse i mean if that if, i mean imagine trying to use leaves as as, <laughs> as a currency right like oh just yeah. go grab some leaves and pay for it it would never work because there's no <clears throat> there's just no limitation of it you have to have a you know limitation of it so and, exactly. and there's this illusion that that they are you know, managing that—that that the Federal Reserve, through their interest rates, is is managing that. So that as the interest rates go up, the you know the amount of money that's circulating throughout the economy gets pulled back out. Yeah. But they're not. They're not doing that. They're they're just printing it out, and a lot of it just goes overseas. You know, a lot of this money that we print out goes overseas, and and you know, in return, we get. Uh, just appliances, stuff from other yeah. countries, right? We get goods and services from other countries. Yeah. And and so th that, of course, runs our inflation up because we have national debt. We have to pay an interest rate on that debt. And, you know, so but that's so in other words, it's not necessarily money that's just circulating throughout our economy either. Yeah. Um, it's a multifaceted issue. If, if the you know currency that? could work if it was managed properly. But yeah, it never has been managed properly ever in history, and there's no reason to think that it ever will be. Yep, I agree. Yep, I agree. Did you personally, know? Did you know, did you know that? Uh, hold on. Uh, let's uh, let's let some other people get some get some words in here. Sure. So what can I talk about? Forgot. Forgot. Go ahead, Alucard. Personally, because I have no control over the monetary system at the current time, I choose to take what is the Federal Debt Reserve Papers and exchange them for food, lead, 
and homesteading materials in which are in my possession, I can touch and personally own, thereby building my wealth in a physical asset that I can possess. I feel yeah, you there. I agree. Contrary to what economists would tell you, which would be to stockpile as much of that of those Federal Reserve notes into a bank somewhere as you can, right? Exactly. Except for if I stockpile rice, beans, food, corn, and flour, and all different types of food, I can always rely on that to come back to me and to be able to use it or trade it for what I need. Yeah, you can buy solar panels with that uh, fiat money too. Create your own electric if you're in a position to do that. Not all places. Not all places. I am off grid, and that is exactly what I do. And water turbines. Awesome. I love nice. it. Yeah, I and I went to a guy's house. The, the solar panel technology is really cool. I went to a guy's house. He's got just a like a he's got like a three bedroom house. It's got uh, just one air conditioning unit on there. You know, normal middle class type house. But it's really it's a new house. So all the windows are nice, sealed and tight. Brand new air conditioning unit, base model, just fourteen seer air conditioning unit. But everything's pretty high efficiency in comparison to older you know older stuff. And the house is sealed really nice. But he's got his almost his entire backyard is you might as well say his whole backyard is uh solar panels and he lives in a community where you've got house 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 you know cookie cutter houses so he had to keep his solar panels like two inches below his fence line so that the homeowners association wouldn't say anything about it in his garage he's got uh these two big batteries you know that that power his house he said now he's not he said he could be but he's not he's uh, only maybe i think he said in the summer with his ac running about 90% off the grid. And he's also got one of those Tesla cars, so his car just charges right off his solar panels. It's like, dude, you don't hardly pay for electricity or gasoline. And I think he said he had about $20,000 in it in total. And it paid for itself in two years. And after that, it was just pure profit. I like the new vertical wind turbines that they, that they got now, too. They're small. They're not bird killers. They, they adjust to lock into the... To the wind efficiency they're like maybe a three foot tall by two foot wide or something and those are really i don't know much about them yet but i've been looking into it and i like what I'm you know here's 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 a funny thought i want you to consider this this guy was able to go off the grid almost 90 percent if climate change was such a huge issue, like they say, why would these power companies not be leasing out uh, solar panel systems much like a cable company would lease out uh, you know, satellite dishes, right? So instead of paying a power bill, you, you, you pay the power company for solar panels. They do. It's such a major issue. Uh, they do, actually. They don't... Um... The, the main thing, they don't advertise it as outwardly as they should. So, you know, the fact that they don't, you know, there's your obvious agenda. But um, they actually, they uh, depending on what company you go with, there are companies that will that will lease you out um, solar panels. And, yeah, you're still paying monthly, but um, your, your, um, your monthly bill ends up being way less than, you know, what it would have been with traditional power companies. That option actually is there. They just don't. They don't harp on it. Like, this is something that Greta should be shrieking about. And, but she's not because there's an agenda. Yes, yeah, some of the um, power companies are doing that. There are some up in New York, um, and that's all I know about. There's solar farms down here in North Carolina. Well, I stand corrected then. I didn't know that they were doing that. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, we got a lot of solar stuff here in Chicago, especially seeing as in the last few years, the technology has really taken an upward turn. Like the solar panels now, even on the most cloudy, frickin' chemtrailed day, it can still pull quite a bit of power. Wind turbines also gotten a small addition. So, yeah, I'm in Chicago, and, uh, you know, I'm there's gonna, a lot I'm of that. I'm going to buy about 10,000 fucking hamsters and put them on a wheel. <laughs> 
<laughs> just about once an hour, throw some hamster food in there. It'll be spinning around. They'll be snapping at it in midair. Arr, arr, arr. Pitch, picture that. <laughs> do, do rats instead of hamsters. They're cheaper to take care of, and they are uh, much more exponentially useful. Rats? Is that, what you said? is that what you said? Yes, it is. Rats indeed. Okay. I think it's a good idea to do that kind of stuff, right, Jeremy? Well, I was joking about the hamsters, but yeah, the oh. uh, the solar panels, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good idea, though, to survive during a collapse, you know. So, what, the hamsters? No, not the hamsters. I mean, using <laughs> solar panels. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, like, yeah. Damn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> 10,000 hamsters, damn. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, a good idea, though. It's a really, it's a really good, idea. good idea to go further places, like in the desert, during the collapse, and use your solar panel for a bit. Yeah. You know. You know. Well, in an off-grid situation, or if you were, if there was a catastrophe of any form, breeding rats is extraordinarily useful due to the fact that you can feed your pets with them and oh, things oh, of that oh. nature. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good idea because I think that, you know, maybe you should buy like at least five hamsters i guess to just you know run very well and you know i don't know if they do it you know i seen a video where they do a hamster and they put it in and they put it in the cage and they use this little tiny solar panel with its power and then all of a sudden the power just goes on you know after the hamster runs so many times you know so it's true i mean it's a good thing to use them but at the same time you might want to use something else bigger than, than those types of things like the hamsters yeah, but if Alvin, Simon, and Theodore are putting on a performance well, running, the power they're generating is getting electric guitar. Yeah. True. Say, so where's Axe Man? I don't know if he left. Uh, he got mad and left. That's, okay. Uh... I don't know why. I was going to ban him, kick him out, because nah, of course. Yeah. No, I know, but you know, he was talking over her, and it did because this is not about arguments, it's about telling the truth, you know. Well, yeah. Uh, Over time, her, though. I'm a him. Point of personal privilege. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sorry, I had to make fun of the socialist thing. My name is Dave. <laughs> oh, you're, oh, oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all good voice communications and all that. I just, yeah. I, I wanted to pretend to get triggered like they did on the, on that socialist convention or whatever. Oh, Point of personal privilege. Do well, not well, use gendered language. Here's the, thing, here's the thing. Let's talk about that for a sec. The majority of those kids, 61% of them, they believe in communism and socialism. I check out the statistics and that's a problem with our society because the way that our school, school system really is horrible. Believe me, our system with the indoctrination and all that kind of stuff, they're teaching your children how to become a socialist. And once they're in their 20s and in their, in their teens, they actually go to these so-called indoctrinations. We talk about this so many times, but it's very important to let everybody know that if you send your child to these so-called indoctrination schools, they will teach you how to become a socialist, you know? Same thing with the college universities, you know, all those uh, professors, they don't believe in freedom of speech. They believe in taking away your rights, and telling their governance to just become a socialist totalitarian uh, country. And that's the agenda. You know, it's not like it doesn't came out of nowhere and it doesn't came out of all. Oh, it all of a sudden came out of something else because, you know, uh, you know, the, because of that. No, it's because you, you, the indoctrination, you know, they're teaching them for that that kind of stuff for over 50 years, you know, and because of that, I, I most likely just, I just don't understand because you know how corrupt the governance really is in, in our society, you know, so, and the thing is, is because the, the majority of so-called younger generation millennials, they will not understand what's, what's happening in the society, of course, because I've experienced these types of these kids or so-called millennials, whatever you want to call them, that just in this ideology, of course. So that's a big problem in, in you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
another part another part of the problem too is that um the the classical liberals you know ones who <clears throat> are mostly boomers who you know believe in liberty and freedom and, you know all the constitutional stuff i might <clears throat> not like what you say but defend death your right to say it and all that me or, <clears throat> me or somebody else yeah um I'm, I'm 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 speaking of you know the traditional classical liberal mostly oh, the okay. boomers um the problem with a lot of them is they don't want to realize that their their political party has been taken over by extreme radical leftists they, they don't want to look at that and so they think that all of you know all this um stuff that we're talking about is a fake news internet meme like oh no no that's not really happening with millennials that's that's just propaganda that's been put out about the left by the alt-right that's not really happening well, and, you try, and you try to tell them yeah it's really happening your shit's been co-opted wake up oh no no that's that's all just right right wing propaganda well, level it's really hard to talk to these well, people here's the thing though and i i and i want to say this that both sides do it no matter what I mean, both sides kind of do it, but at the oh, same yeah. time, the most, the most, the most brainwashed group of all time is you, like you said before, the liberal mm -hmm. leftists, because those are oh the yeah, ones conservatives are, in their Trump worship doesn't impress me either. Well, them if, too, because they're all brainwashed, of course, look, because they if, don't understand. Mm -hmm. If I was gonna play politics, right, and and I'm okay for the for the sake of conversation, I'm gonna say I yeah, am right. a Republican, okay. I am I, I really I, I'm wondering where are these Republicans, supposed Republicans that are supposed to be the party of freedom and liberty, right? Where are they at telling these literally literal socialist communists in, in office going, yo, get these motherfuckers out of the White House? Like, you know, what? what you, no, that is contradictory to everything that the supposed Constitution stands for, et cetera, et cetera. Where are they at? You know, so if I'm a Republican and I'm buying into this whole political thing, I'm I'm looking at them and saying, "What the fuck are you doing up there? What 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 are you there for? If you're not, even, you know, even going to do anything about this, right? That's why I don't subscribe to any of it because it's all nonsense. It, it that that should be evidence that it's all nonsense. It's all theater. It every bit of it. It's all bullshit. Left right, right, left right, right, right. One of these guys, you, one of those guys, damn, I, I corrected myself. You unmuted. You want to say something? I can see it. I can see it in your eyes. I see it. That's, that's, that's why I, um, I don't typically get along with most, uh, conservatives or liberals because they're, they're both caught in that left, right trap. And I'll tell conservatives, like, you know, you guys got mad at the, at the liberals when Obama was fucking around, liberals were making all apologist excuses for this tyranny angle. it's for the greater good the greater good you know and like oh and, and you know the conservatives rightly got um upset about that but now you know here comes trump basically doing all the same shit to a different cosmetic i guess but still all the same shit and then when trump's bullshit is pointed out then the conservatives are like oh no he's playing 5d chess he's gonna save us from the deep state and i'm like you guys are doing the same shit that you got mad at the liberals for doing eh, no we're not you're you're a retarded snowflake yeah you must be it's, it's like oh god it's like disagree with a conservative and you're a snowflake. Oh. Disagree with a, a liberal, and you're literally fucking Hitler. It's like, <laughs> well, me personally, I'm tired of watching chess. Let's go ahead and drain the swamp if he's going to do it. Well, the only thing is, he needs to fire Jared Kushner, that Zionist uh, son of his, because <laughs> he's the only one who wants to bring in, you know, people from Central America, of course. And Ooh. all of those people are just uh, part of the group of banking cartels and the Zionist corporation, of course. So, and if I tell this to anybody in the public, they'll say, well, you're an anti-Semite and you, you, you should are, be though. arrested. I know, I know the truth. You're anti-Semitic, don't lie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you fucking racist. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what you they know what? If, every day. If the, if the climate was really that big of a deal as they're saying and the way they're saying... Put solar panels on that wall, Mr. President. Solar panels. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Yeah. Well, the only thing is that, you know, I I just I, I, I really think he's he's just being stupid. I mean, I'm not saying he's stupid, but the only thing is what makes me upset is that he's working for those Zionist corporation people, of course, you know. And the thing is, is that what what he really needs to do is just fire everybody who's a Zionist person who wants to implement 5G all over the world, all over the country of ours, and especially around the globe, because uh, fortunately, uh, that's the to fire himself then. But well, is he even in charge, or is he just the actor? Like he's really, a puppet. The he he's is a puppet. A, exactly, dude. Listen, he is. And and you know what else? He he played us all. And he yep. said, "I was gonna fight for, I was gonna fight for you guys and, and stuff." And then many years later, he's a, you know, a traitor. I'm gonna pretend to be a truther, and you're gonna believe me. I'm gonna play 4D chess, then 5G chess, and you're gonna believe me. I'm giving you a lot of bullshit. You're gonna believe me. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be huge, like my dick that I've got up Netanyahu's Great. ass because my daughter's married to, to someone in his family and, and us in and, and Israel, the terrorist state of Israel and the terrorist harboring Saudi Arabia, we're all in a big gangbang Israel orgy. Right we're we're fucking exist. humanity. Big, huge orgy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I slapped at that. He's a, he's, yeah, he's a, <laughs> yeah, he's a puppet. Really, he is. I don't care what people say. You like Trump. I'm sorry, but your guy is a puppet. He's a Zionist puppet, and he always will be. Because he's not well, fighting it's... for you. He's, he's fighting for the corporation. He's protecting the corporation. I don't care what people say. Name you one know? president that hasn't been a Zionist puppet in your eyes. Well, yeah, we can't. Exactly. Because all these do is see Jews. Do what? Oh. I see Jews everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, dude. No, I mean, look, it's just it, it, Trump's following the boomer arguments, man. It's just the boomer yes. ideologies. That's all it is. It's, it's. I'm not 75 years old, and I'm and I and I follow those same ideologies. So I guess I'm a boomer now. Yes. No. You are. That's You're funny. a boomer. Yeah. You're a radical yeah. centrism fence riding boomer. That's you guys, all right? You guys are the radical centrists. <laughs> hey, centrist and proud motherfuckers. Through the left right dichotomy. Uh, hey, listen. I, I listen to you guys like literally flip flop every week. It's great. Y'all better stop no. making fun of my beloved president, okay? Because he's spraying good chemtrails, he's spraying vitamins. And he's All bringing mass migration, man. Listen, vote for me, man. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, you know. What it, <laughs> remember how everyone was bitching about the the lead in the fuel? We got to get rid of the lead. Guess what? They replaced the the, the lead with in both um, car fuel and jet fuel, aluminum nanoparticulates. So every commercial aircraft, no special tanks required. Is putting out the artificial overcast, and cars are putting out the ground ground level chemtrail because there's a nanoparticulate aluminum in all the fuel. That's mm. that's the level Tom Buckery we're dealing. With. Maybe you're not getting enough aluminum in your diet. Did you ever think of that? I think you're liking something in your diet. I don't know what it is. Oh, dude, why you always have to add on me just because I like joke around <laughs> with you? Like you take it to level ten and shit. Calm the fuck. Well, up. I'm still alive, so I must be lacking aluminum my diet because that's detrimental to organic life. Yeah. You know, Jeremy, problems. you remember you remember back in the day when you could actually be friends with somebody and, and not um agree on everything? You you remember those not, days? Who said we're not friends? We I'm not personally attacking you. I, bro. Are you sure I think you're a liberal. You're getting easily triggered here. Oh fuck off. I will kill myself. I, I mean Wow. Somebody call I'm the FBI. Get the, I'm get the gonna, I'm the gonna house commit house suicide now. Yeah, like, wow, is it getting is it getting snow here? Or am I just in Chicago? Sure, shit got cold in my little studio real quick. Let's I hate all y'all on <laughs> many different levels. <laughs> You're all literally Hitler. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> oh. <man. laughs> I blame the Mexicans. Guys, I'm going to bring you mass migration and we're going to replace you. 
You're all what? beaners because no. you disagreed with the president. Now shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's saying. I mean, I'm telling you. Oh, we just, well, we're not going to bring people, but we're going to bring them legally to replace your ass. And then people are like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, if you won't vote for me, I'll fucking import somebody that will. Oh, man, this guy's he's I know one thing. What is it? You guys would be missing Trump the day the fucking lefties take over. You're going to be wishing for the Trump. No, dude. No, about how good no, they no, 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 no. Yes. No, no, no. Mark my words. No. All right. Today, no, October 17th, 2019. No. Is the day of reckoning. No. I'm going to ask for Trump Both back. sides do it. Both sides do it. They want to implement 5G. They well. want to implement everything. Well, first off, all right, 5G. Oh, God, hold up, hold up, hold up. First off, 5G. Walt Fritos. 5G is awesome. It's quiet. Okay, I'm going to jump in. Everything's quiet. Uh, They don't necessarily do the same thing. This is where I want to draw, like, sort of differentiate the difference. On on the right, if you will, uh, Republicans, right, they are the warmongering party. They will basically terrorize the rest of the fucking world. Uh, they will just send bombs and drop bombs on every goddamn buddy through the military industrial complex. Whatever it is that Israel and Saudi Arabia want bombed, here comes the United States bombing the shit out of it, right? On the left, they are, well, they used to be anyways. They used to be the anti war party that would, you know, campaign against war. However, uh, they are the homeland tyrannical government party. So, you know, the hell with your personal freedoms here, right? So, it's if you vote for. A Republican, you're voting for tyranny in other countries. If you vote for a Democrat, you're voting for tyranny right here. Either way, you're voting for tyranny. And then when we put both of them together, it's problem, reaction, solution, because tyranny abroad is used to justify tyranny at home. So yeah. right goes out and creates tyranny abroad, and then the left comes in and justifies tyranny at home which then brings about more tyranny abroad because there's tyranny at home. Well, we need to support our tyranny, so we need to go out and do that and the other. Oh, we created more tyranny abroad, and the other people don't like it. So now, oh, well, they don't like it. They're our enemy. So, oh, we need to increase our security here at home. So there's more of your rights being flushed down the toilet as you guys complacency complacently fall for this fucking shell game every single time, every four years, collective amnesia, and you fall for it every time. There's a sucker born every minute, and they're called citizens of the United States. Well, you're more than welcome to go move to China. See how that oh, works. that's that's that sounds fantastic! Yeah, oh my God. that's their goal. Argument. They want it here. That that's what they that's what they want to bring here. It's just there's still too many people here as of yet that love freedom. They can't just drop in and say, "Hey, let's all just become like China now because we say so." There'd be revolution overnight. No, that's why it's the totalitarian tiptoe, the boiling frog effect. You know, even Hitler said, um, after a few generations. Of indoctrinating you know the youth um you know i can get your kids to think exactly the way i want them to think i'll completely control a nation just uh reprogramming your youth and wow, that's what's wow. going on Bullshit. chinese communism's their freaking goal man that's where People they're been trying world. to make me think certain ways for years it hasn't worked so i call well bull. yeah well P- that's P-Sec. you what about P-Sec. the next generations uh p did you watch did you by chance check our uh Catch our, our live stream we did on Larry Backer, the the Penn State law professor and his plan to implement a social credit system in the West, but through the private sector. Did you check um, that out? Um, I'm not sure if I did, but it is a subject that I'm that I'm already uh, familiar with. Um, okay. they've been, they've been tiptoeing that out that out like crazy to where you know companies like um uber and other other companies if um if you commit wrong think on social media you know they can they can deny service you know people being defunded deplatformed uh, so on and so forth they want to make everything like that so they don't have to make it open laws all they have to do is use the my private company excuse and just all these private companies just go like oh you commit wrong think uh you know we won't allow you to have our service what happens when that trickles down to the average person um credit cards and bank accounts and having electricity and gas and what happens when that 
They and can't do that for electricity and gas. There's a thing called yet. antitrust. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's a thing called what? Antitrust. But there's a lot of things that they are doing that they shouldn't be able to do. Take for example, all the all the um the internet censorship. There are laws in place right now. And please, please do keep in mind that for these people that are the law, the law doesn't matter. That's just a shit show for us. <clears throat> there's laws in place right now that state if you're a platform. You are not legally liable for what the people under your your platform do. But if you're a a publisher, if you're a media publisher, then just like you know a uh, a television channel or a newspaper publication or whatever, you are liable um, for the content. And you know YouTube and all these all these other places that are supposed to quote unquote you know uh, be uh, platform, they switch back and forth between platform and publisher whenever it's convenient when someone says oh no no you can't do that they go oh well yes we can we're platform but then they'll switch it back the other way when someone says oh no no well you can't do that oh well yes we can we have the right because we're publisher and so it's like wait a minute are you guys liable or are you not liable well the whole reason they haven't been brought into into court to really address that is because they're above the freaking law there is a ruling class, a criminal ruling class to which the laws do not apply. They only apply to the slaves. They only apply to us. They do not apply to the plantation owners. They do not apply to our own. <laughs> That's why Trump will never arrest Hillary. You'll never see Hillary Obama or any of them arrested. You'll never see 9-11 investigated as promised, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, bullshit. But, no, bullshit. Q said so. Oh, well, never mind. I, I, oh, I, I stand corrected. Then. Oh, I'm going to blindly believe Q because, you know. It's a hey, 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 hey. Don't you know about the 32,000 indictments? What the Trust fuck, man? Plan. Yeah, yeah. Trust you know, uh, Q from Star Trek, he's an all-knowing god. So wait, wait. Well, so a -chan, Q. wait, wasn't Q was on A-Chan. A-Chan doesn't exist anymore. So is he even relevant? I don't know. I was joking. Yeah, but A-Chan's gone. Isn't that where he posted? I thought it was 4chan. I don't know. No, no, no. Four chain is Paul. Uh, hell, I don't know, dude. <laughs> how I, the I, hell I, you guys? Are, how are you a world expert shit poster and you don't use four chain, Jeremy? My opinion of you is winning. Mm, because it's mostly the the times that I did get on there, it was all just people memeing. It wasn't anything. Yeah, I know. I know. It's been. It's basically been co opted. We both know. Oh well, I think I think humans suck. So my opinion, my opinion of people just is really kind of irrelevant anyway. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I think I think everybody sucks. So, I mean, so, so. well, your mama sure as shit does. Well, you there you go with the person. You yeah. wanted a mama joke. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking asshole! <laughs> Ad hominem motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker. I was waiting for the right moment. I didn't know mothers could fucking asshole got a strap on. Oh, boy. Oh, now, right. now you're going too far, man. Right. <laughs> well, hey, if he hey. went too far, if the strap-on was long enough, there might be oh, some damage. Uh, uh, all right there, McJewy Juice guy. <laughs> Clear your nose first. All right, guys. Well, I I'm getting off. Uh, <clears throat> you're getting off to the Yo Mama jokes, huh? Well, nice to know. Whatever gets your rocks off, you know. <laughs> All right, dudes. Uh, next Wednesday, same time, 9 p.m. U.S. Central Time. I don't have a clue what we're talking about yet, but we'll get into it then. We might, we might continue time, on the uh, channel. Huh? I said same batshit time, same batshit channel. Pretty much. Uh, it's Batwoman now. All right. Hmm? All right, it'll, Jeremy. I guess you be, take care of my man. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me. Point of personal privilege. All right, guys. Later. I'm sick, Willie, and I approve this message. <laughs>